Hello, and welcome to this video abstract. My name is James Holcomb, and I'm the first author on this open access article published in Brain Communications, titled Improving Tremor Response to Focus Ultrasound Thalamotomy. MRI-guided high-intensity focus ultrasound thalamotomy is an incisionless FDA-approved treatment for central tremor. During the procedure, an MRI-compatible helmet, which houses 1,024 phase array ultrasound transducers, is used. Those ultrasound elements can be simultaneously focused into the brain to produce a thalamic lesion indicated by the red arrow in the right-hand image. In producing this lesion, we dramatically reduce tremor in our central tremor patients. Here, you can see two Archimedes spirals drawn by the same central tremor patient. The left spiral was drawn immediately before the procedure, and the spiral on the right was drawn immediately after the procedure. Qualitatively, you can see the substantial improvement in tremor that MRI-guided high-intensity focused ultrasound thalamotomy is able to provide. The standard high fluid thalamotomy target to treat a central tremor is the ventral intermediate nucleus, or the VIM, shown here in orange. And while it is easy to identify in this image, it cannot be identified on standard MR imaging. Consequently, most focused ultrasound centers rely on stereotactic targeting, which entails measuring distances from key anatomic landmarks to identify the VIM. One critique of this method is that it does not account for natural variation in size or shape of the VIM within our patient population. And indeed, a high degree of adverse effects are a primary limitation of hypothalamotomy when using stereotactic targeting. In order to reduce these adverse effects, it was recommended the focus ultrasound target be placed two millimeters superior to the anterior commissure posterior commissure plane, or ACPC plane, so this prolate sphere lesion would not damage structures inferior to the ACPC plane. At our center, we do not use stereotactic targeting to lesion the VIM. Instead, Dr. Bobby Shaw at UT Southwestern has developed four track tractography to personalize the treatment to individual patients and improve outcomes. This method uses diffusion sensor imaging tractography to identify the decussating and non-decussating dentito rubroflamic tracts, and we target the confluence of both tracts as they approach the thalamus. We also identify the cortical spinal tract and medial lumiscus so that these tracts are not damaged during the procedure. Although we initially adopted the recommended target placement at 2 mm superior to the ACPC plane, in some patients, tractography revealed that at 2 mm superior to the ACPC plane, the cortical spinal tract and or medial lumiscus would be damaged. So in these patients, we chose to target at 1.2 to 1.5 mm superior to the ACPC plane, and in these patients, post-operative imaging revealed that the focused ultrasound lesion extended into the posterior subthalamic area, or PSA. So the purpose of the study was to determine if those patients targeted at 1.2 to 1.5 millimeters superior to the ACPC plane and with lesion extension into the PSA had a difference in tremor improvement than those patients targeted at 2 millimeters superior to the ACPC plane and no lesion extension into the PSA. Between April of 2021 and May of 2022, we identified 10 essential tremor patients who were targeted at 1.2 to 1.5 millimeters superior to the ACPC plane and who had lesion extension into the PSA. During that same time period, we identified an equal number of essential tremor patients who were targeted at 2 mm superior to the ACPC plane and who did not have lesion extension into the PSA. Additionally, one movement disorders neurologist used the essential tremor rating assessment scale, or TETRIS, to assess postural, kinetic, and Archimedes spiral scores at baseline and follow-up appointments. Then, for each TETRIS score, the percent improvement was calculated for each patient. During the procedure, we also recorded the total number of sonications, the thermal dose to elicit tremor response, and the skull density ratio for each patient. For each of these six measures, we then use Wilcox and rank sum tests to compare the patients with lesion extension into the PSA to those without lesion extension into the PSA. Following our analyses, we found that for postural, kinetic, and Archimedes spiral scores, those with lesion extension into the PSA had significantly greater tremor improvement than those without lesion extension into the PSA. We also found that those with lesion extension in the PSA required a significantly lower number of sonications during the procedure and required a significantly lower thermal dose to elicit tremor response. There were no statistically significant differences between groups and skull density ratio. So in conclusion, high intensity focused ultrasound lesion extension into the PSA using four track tractography provides improved tremor control. This is a graphical abstract demonstrating the targeting placement, the resultant lesion extension into the posterior subthalamic area, and differences in tremor response. Thank you.